Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your Lucha Underground Ultima Lucha preview and predictions. Guys, I am so excited for this. What's going on? John A.K. Vocal Gresham alongside my cohort and commentary, Ashton, for our Ultima Lucha preview and predictions. Lucha Underground is one of the most revolutionary programs uh, myself and my cohort and commentary here have seen in some time. And just to be able to do our first preview and predictions for this promotion, my blood is pumping, bro. I can't wait to go through this card with you. And you know what? I'm going to take it a step further, and I'm going to specify Ultima Lucha for Season 1 because I'm confident that even with all the hubbub and even with Meltzer being a dick about talking about how they're not going to get a second season, I am confident that Lucha Underground will have a second season. I believe! I believe in Lucha, and if by some tragedy it doesn't occur, then you just know that television is wrong, plain and simple, because nobody is doing what Lucha Underground is doing right now, and I just really hope they get the support that they need and deserve. But for now, let's focus on how they're going to go out with a bang. Ultima Lucha, a two-part extravaganza, eight-match card, and we're going to break it down for you here. Absolutely. Now... We There might be a match or two on this card that we either forget or that we don't know of or something like that. We are going to do the best of our ability to cover this. I have been trying so hard to avoid spoilers, and I think I finally found a match listing that doesn't give away the winners here. So it's an eight-match card that I can see that we know of. Starting with, and I'm going to, go right away, the first three matches are going to be taking th place this week. The first of which being Cage versus The Mac. Yeah, you know, very uh, interesting matchup here because I believe this is false count anywhere, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is a false count anywhere match. Yes, yeah, so I really see Cage getting his win back here yeah. you know these two guys have had a very interesting first season mac didn't come along until a little bit later cage was very early on i believe in lucha underground's first season and cage uh, you know debuted in episode 10 yeah see not bad considering that this is what a 39 episode season um yeah. you know so he again very early and you know he came in ashton made a splash right away gun for puma and he's definitely cooled off since then which i mean that's not you know a negative i think all prospects are bound to at one point or another and you know i've still been consistently enjoying his work however i do feel like cage is the bigger investment here and that's kind of what i'm basing my gut on i mean yes the mac has beaten cage twice but i feel like the story here is is that when you leave cage completely unrestricted to just unleash all of his ability the mac won't be able to stand a chance and in falls count anywhere i just feel like that's going to favor the machine so i'm going with cage for my formal prediction to me this is kind of the pinnacle of storytelling. And this is a, a legitimately a lesson that I think WWE needs to take a lesson from. You have the babyface win the first two matches. And the Mac, I would even argue that the second match was almost flukish. That second win that he got felt like a fluke. And Cage just kind of popped up right afterwards and then beat the crap out of the Mac. And that led to this. You have the babyface win the first two matches. And then in that third match, the heel absolutely demolishes the babyface. Maybe 10, 15 minutes of just pure violence and just domination. And I know that the Mac is going to put on a great show here, but on top of that, I think that he's going to make cage look great. And I agree with you. Cage has got to win this match. If cage does not win this match, it is a travesty. Yeah, I would have to agree. You know, I'm already curious. I mean, you talked about the confidence, you know, ultimate Lucha for season one you and i both have been thinking a lot about season two already yeah. i know i even said on the last uh, lucha underground twit wow i was talking about king cuerno especially for season two but cage is another one again he started hot in season one i think his stock's gonna go up a little bit here is he gonna be a hot prospect in season two i'm not ready to discount it i think anybody can be a hot prospect in season two but i do think cage is the bigger investment here again so i echo your sentiments if he doesn't win here I, I won't crap all over it because I like the Mac, but it's definitely a, a bit bewildering from where I sit. So we'll see what Just, happens. I mean, not, not even necessarily from a talent perspective, because these guys are both phenomenally talented. Just from a storytelling perspective, for the Mac to beat Cage three times in a row doesn't make any sense to me. Doesn't make any sense to me either. So I do think Cage is going to go over here. 
Absolutely. Up right. Up next, then, we can get into our trios tag team championship match. Team Sitcom, also known as Angelico, Ivelisse, and Son of Havoc, taking on the Disciples of Death. I don't think the Disciples of Death have gotten names yet, have they? No, they have not. Uh, not no. to my understanding. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to refer to them as the Disciples of Death. I'm going to be completely forthright here, John. I think the Disciples of Death are going to take the titles. I don't think that Evil Lisa's Enko is going to be able to hold up. And I think that the no-nonsense attitude of Katrina and the Disciples of Death is going to end up causing them to... I'm going to go ahead and say definitively defeat the trio's tag champs right now. See, it's funny, Ashton, because I'm torn with believing either... Um, you know, Katrina and her army of, of the undead, you know, Mil Muertes and the Disciples of Death, they're either going to win it all or they're going to lose it all. I can't really see a half-and-half half situation. So my prediction for this match, I think, is going to have consequences for the main event. That's just my personal prediction. I can't speak for you, obviously. Um, so, you know, I am torn. Like, do I go with Team Sitcom? And then by my own logic that I've just put forth, I would have to go with Poon in the main event right or do i go disciples of death and then by that same logic mil Muertes in the main event um disciples of death are so impressive and i feel like if anybody has any right to beat team sitcom for these trios tag team championships it is the disciples of death hands down well if you uh, really think about it they're the only established trio other than team sitcom right now all the other trios that were kind of thrown together for the sake of the trios tournament have either broken up or just kind of disassociated since then. Absolutely. And, you know, I completely agree. The only other quote-unquote legitimate trio I can think of is, uh, you know, Crew 2.0 with Chavo at the helm, but they're not interested in the trio's tag team titles. They're interested in protecting Chavo. It's more of a singular effort. Um, God, you know what? Something tells me it's not team sitcoms time just yet i'm big on the disciples of death and it's crazy me saying this because if you remember when the disciples of death first debuted they didn't even step in a ring i looked to you and i said ashton those are the guys that are going to win the tag team titles from team sitcom yep. uh i still believe that i just don't think now is the time so in a little bit of an upset i'm gonna go team sitcom here to win to retain the titles i agree wait you said uh, sitcom wait what yeah Sitcom's retaining, I think. I don't think they're dropping it just yet. Wow. Okay. I mean, I I am mostly interested in again going forward. We we need to assume that season two is happening. I know right. that it hasn't been made official yet, but we need to assume for the sake of this Ultima Lucha, and I'm sure that they the, the writers were feeling the same way. The writers were probably like, okay, we can write this so that it's a, a good, comprehensive, entire season that you can watch from beginning to end with no need for a sequel, but we also need to make it so that there is uh, an, an assumption that there will be a second season. So they need to have something to jump off of. And I feel like the team of Angelico, Evil East, and Son of Havoc, their shtick has kind of run dry at this point. We get it. They don't get along. I think it is just kind of the, the time for them to split up. Son of Havoc and really, I can't even single out anyone. I was going to say Son of Havoc and Evil East, but Angelico is freaking amazing. I feel like Son of Havoc could be the world champion at some point in season two. Eva Lise has a lot of great matches ahead of her, and I really want to see more from her since she hasn't really done much since mid-season because of the broken ankle. Angelico is one of those guys who could put on a match of the year contender on any given week. All three of these people, I think as great as they've been as the trio's champions, I am looking more forward to what they do in their individual singles careers. Oh, I completely agree with you. Uh, in particular, I, I'm again, like you, I'm not ready to single out anybody, but if I was going to, you and I have talked at length about Son of Havoc. Yeah. I feel like this guy is a fan favorite, and he is going to be that baby face that when he wins the world title, and believe me, it's not a question of if, it is a question of when, ladies and gentlemen, with Son of Havoc. Trust me on this. When he wins that world championship, they're going to have to call a contract the next day because the roof's going to be blown off the place, yep. and they're going to need to fix it. Exactly. Um, on Helico, like you said, I could see him being a future like Gift of the Gods winner. I could see him. Uh, dude, I was even going to say that I think Son of Havoc could possibly win Gift of the Gods next year. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, and, and I can't wait to talk about that match, by the way. We'll get to that a bit later. And Evil Lease, if they go all the way, like, you know, I've been saying for the longest time now, I think Sexy Star is a long con. I think she is going to be the female to shatter a huge glass ceiling and be their world champion. 
I could see Eva Lee in that same mold, honestly. I just yeah. feel like this injury has really hampered her. It's been make... a major setback. Absolutely. But make no mistake, guys. Eva Lee has the personality, and she has the ability to be in that same class as Sexy Star. I'm only talking about Sexy Star primarily because I do think she has a great backstory. I enjoy the character. And let's be honest here, nothing against Eva Lee, but she's healthy. So she's able to compete and remain constant in people's minds. And I think um, what Eva Lee uh, may lack, as opposed to, look, if you look at Son of Havoc and Angelico, I think what Eva Lee lacks a little bit in the athletic department, she makes up for in personality because she is that larger-than-life character. She's almost a freaking cartoon character. Whereas Son of Havoc is just an insanely athletic dude with a mask, and on Helico is just an insanely athletic dude that does crazy stunts. Absolutely. I completely agree. She's certainly the most nuanced person in Team Sitcom when, when you get right down to it. Right. Uh, which, that's another thing I'd like to see for both Son of Havoc and on Helico in Season 2, develop a little bit more nuance. You know, I'd like to go a little bit further, especially with Son of Havoc, because I feel like if he's going to carry this temple on his back, you know, I'd like to see more from him. But yeah, I mean, just to really, you know, echo your point, I completely agree. You can't really single out anybody. I think their singles careers are going to be phenomenal. I just feel like this dropping of the titles is going to come a different way. I, I just I feel like there's a bigger story here that they want to tell, and maybe that's just me overthinking because, I mean, Lucha Underground style this whole season, we have never been able to maintain balance, Ashton. We've never been able to know where they're going. I just can't see it as their time being the Disciples of Death to win the titles. So, Team Sitcom, yeah, I'm sticking by to retain. Wow. All right. I'm going to stick with Disciples of Death. I think that they're going to take the titles and allow Angelico, Ivelisse, and Son of Havoc to do their own individual things in Season 2. Uh, so we have a, our first disagreement here, but let's move on here. Drago versus Hernandez. Now, this is sort of a little bit spoiled because we kind of know Hernandez has this weird thing going on where he kind of is in TNA but kind of isn't, and there's the, kind of a, from what I understand, there's a lawsuit going on. So I am just going to use that information and jump to the assumption that Drago is going to be the person to get Hernandez outed from the temple completely agree this is probably the most straightforward matchup on the card from where i sit yeah simply because again like you said the the ambiguities regarding legal matters and and things outside of the storyline and hell even within the context of the storyline hernandez is a guy that's really been running his mouth and if the temple teaches you anything do that or those who are of a particular alignment you always have to pay the piper eventually well and that's the other thing this is the amazing stipulation the believers backlash the the fan lumberjack strap match that we've got going on here is going to be absolutely insanity so as as straightforward as the prediction seems to be i think the execution of this match is what's going to make it special completely agree with you i could see a lot of uh believers really uh, taking the piss out of Hernandez with those belts, those straps. And like I said, and this is just purely fandom speaking, but I want to bring it full circle since everybody seemed to love it uh, when I suggested on that one particular episode of Lucha Underground Twitter. Well, I hope we get a fireball spot. I hope we get something crazy where Drago just shatters Hernandez's disbelief in dragons yeah. and we get that really cool finish. I think that would be awesome. If not, I understand. I mean, there maybe, are only so maybe things- since it's kind of like a uh, a crazy stipulation match with no like disqualifications or anything like that. Maybe they head to the back and then we get a CGI scene of Drago turning into a dragon. <laughs> or yeah, you know, and you and I talked about that. The way I would book this match, if you just want me to map it out very quickly, you have Drago get the win. Then maybe later in the show, you have one of those cinematic segments that you and I just absolutely love. And apparently everybody else too, because Stone Cold said on his podcast, when we listen to that Johnny Mundo and he's such a big fan of those. You know, maybe Hernandez is is complaining. Maybe he's kicking stuff. You know, maybe they do slow motion punches like he's punching a wall. Then he sees Drago in the shadows, and he's like, "What do you want?" And then it cuts, and you just see this big burst of flame. Yeah. And you know, maybe, maybe Drago even says, uh, uh, "What do I want to pay a debt?" or just something like that. And then he blows the flames, and he just he just burns Hernandez alive. And that's how we write him off TV. I mean, how you should. Exactly. I mean, hell, we saw a man's face get eaten off, so don't tell me a man getting burned alive is too much to ask for. Yeah, I mean, I genuinely hope we see at least one more person get killed by the end of this season. (laughs) Did you ever think you'd say that about a wrestling product? No, I didn't, and I love it so much. (laughs) But yeah, I think this is definitely very straightforward, Ashton. No need for really elaborate discussion here. Drago wins. I I think the only real question is, what does he do for season two? That's the real intrigue here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my thing, too, is because Drago... Uh, Drago is a little bit on the older side. He's he's on the wrong side of uh, of his 30s. He's 39, I believe, from what I understand. 
Um, and like we said, it's pretty clear that Hernandez is not going to be back with Lucha Underground for season two. But I'm curious as to what they do with Drago because they could really use him. Uh, he could almost be like their mechanic at this point. Just the guy that gets some good wins over, over the mid-carders and kind of asserts himself in that upper mid-card position so that when guys start to get pushed, like when there's kind of a rocket getting shoved under somebody, they can use Drago as the guy to make them look great. Right, absolutely. Drago, I think, is perfect as like that enhancement talent. You know, yeah. that guy that could really elevate other people to the next level. That's why I loved, because it was Drago who feuded with King Cuerno early in the season, right? Yes, and it made Cuerno look amazing. Exactly. So that's the perfect example I can think of to illustrate your point. I completely agree with you on all counts. So give Drago the win here, so then it makes the next person he feuds with that's actually going to stick around long term look even better. So that's my prediction. Absolutely. All right. That was day one. That's what we're expecting this week. Those three matches are happening this week. So next week, we right. are looking at just a ridiculous two hours of programming. Lucha Underground might only be 39 episodes, but it is 40 hours worth of content. Right. So, it's going to be crazy, guys. On yeah. the card I'm looking at, on the card I'm looking at, our first match of of part two of Ultima Lucha, the the old uh, curtain jerker, Johnny Mundo versus Alberto El Patron. <sighs> oh, God. All right, guys. Here's the thing. Everybody knows my rule about TwitWow. You guys get to see the fandom every once in a while, but I love having these serious discourses with Ashen. It gets my blood going. I love this shit. You know that. The fan in me obviously wants Mundo to win. I know I can understand why a lot of people would consider this hyperbole, but I genuinely believe this has been some of the best work in his career, what he's done in Season 1. I love him as a heel. I think his matches are amazing. I think everything is cooking for him him right now, and if there was ever a time that he was going to be a world champion for any organization, I think it would be now, because I think the guy's 35, you don't have much time left, it, it's really now or never if it's ever going to happen, and I say it with no absence of hurt that I do think it's going to be never, because if I'm talking legitimately, let's be real here, Alberto El Patron has the fan base, I think he has the backing, he has the influence, I think Lucha Underground understands that Johnny Mundo is great in those main event situations, but he'll never really be the main event, if you get what I mean. Like, he'll never hold the strap. He'll never carry those programs. I wish that wasn't the case. I think they look at Patron for season two. They want him to be a contender. And I feel like him beating Mundo in the middle of the ring and getting his comeuppance is the way for him to do it. Because I think when he's done with Mundo, whoever is the winner of Muertes Puma, that's who he's gunning for. And that is going to be the first really big program in Season 2. So it is with a heavy heart as a fan. Everybody knows it's Mundo or nothing. But if I'm being objective and having this conversation with Ashton, I have got to go Patron yet again. I feel like he is the focus right now. And we're looking at our next number one contender for the Lucha Underground Championship. So that's my prediction. You know, it's so funny the way our minds work. Because for the longest time, I was going into this thinking there is no way that Alberto El Patron is going to beat Johnny Mundo again. Right. But the more I and think about I it, the more I think about it, though, I feel like this isn't – this is almost like if you think about like Vince McMahon in 2012, Extreme Rules – it's not Brock Lesnar versus John Cena. It's UFC versus WWE. This is not Johnny Mundo versus Alberto El Patron. This is Lucha Underground versus AAA. And I think because of that mindset, I think that Johnny Mundo is going to get this win to prove that the Lucha Underground guy, not even the champion, just the Lucha Underground guy. He is a main event guy in Lucha Underground, but he's not the champion. He's not the tippy top, but he's at the top of the pyramid in the kind of the general vicinity of the championship is better than the best guy that triple a has to offer. Yeah. I mean, dude, what you're saying right now, if you were right, I mean, you know, the reaction I would have to Mundo beating Patron because I've told everybody about the history and how that's one big thing on Mundo's to-do list. I mean, it really is just beat Patron, win world title, party 
like crazy. That's the list in a nutshell. So if that were to happen, the reaction would be huge. I just don't I'm see calling it. it. I, I am calling it. I'm calling. I think it might even be an upset. So I'm going to say I'm calling the upset. I'm calling Johnny Mundo to defeat Alberto El Patron at Ultima Lucha. And I think that that's going to send a message. It's going to send a message that, yeah, sure, you might recognize these guys from WWE, but right now Johnny Mundo is from Lucha Underground. Alberto El Patron is from AAA. Alberto El Patron might be a part of Lucha Underground, but I personally, as a Lucha Underground fan, see him as more of an outsider than Johnny Mundo, who's been there since day one. I find it so crazy that the just avid ravenous Mundo Mark is picking Patron and you who I know you appreciate Mundo too it's not like you, Do you want to know guy. why John I'm, I'm gonna say it right now it's the Dean Ambrose factor I am a, the hardcorest of hardcore Dean Ambrose fans but I never ever pick him to win matches because anytime I do I'm all, always disappointed same thing right. for you you don't want to be disappointed so you don't want to pick up Johnny Mundo and I understand that but I don't really have anything to be disappointed by so I'm going all in on the Mundo card Dude, if you're right, I cannot wait to lose my shit on live reactions. I'm it is going to be the legend status. I am calling it. It's going to happen. I'm telling you. I'm calling it. But now we've got to move on. Pentagon Jr. versus Vampiro. And because you went first last time, I'm going to go first this time. I'm going to come right out and say it. I think the reason they stuck the hardcore stipulation on this match was for Vampiro to win in a convincing manner. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, to me, I think um, if you wanted Pentagon Jr. to win, you could have just made it a wrestling match. But they kept it interesting. They made it hardcore just so that Vampiro can win in a way that doesn't damage Pentagon Jr. Yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting theory. And I, I definitely see the logic that you're using. You know, no contention on that front. My thing is it's weird because you just got done saying – it's it's with uh, Patron Mundo. It's so interesting how our minds work sometimes in these matches because to me, when I look at this match, dude, I get such like a Randy Orton Cactus Jack Backlash 04 kind of vibe. I feel like this match exists so that Pentagon Jr. can beat the legend. Vampiro in an environment where he'll look competent and he'll really get the crowd into it and then Pentagon Jr. just kind of solidifies himself and scores a big sacrifice for his master because I was talking about uh, King Cuerno on the last Lucha Underground Twitter. Well, if you want to know the honest truth of who I think the real breakout star is going to be of Season 2 and a guy who may really drive it home with a lot of steam behind it, it's Pentagon Jr., I, I think this guy is one of the mo uh, most intriguing storylines, not named, you know, Matanza and Black Lotus, going on right now in the temple. And I feel like he, I don't want to say he needs this win, because here's the thing. If Vampiro wins, again, I agree with your logic. So it's nothing for me to be salty about, right? Because they have these rules so that Vampiro can do it, as you said, in a convincing manner. But if Pentagon Jr. wins... That's a sacrifice for his master. It's a sacrifice so big because Vampiro is a legend. Maybe the master will be ready to emerge. That's actually and... my question, though, is to me, I feel like Vampiro winning almost is more likely to make the master emerge out of anger because, like, Pentagon Jr. has been hyping up this, this, this final sacrifice like it's this big deal. And then if he fails, or, or better yet, maybe Vampiro wins the match and then afterwards Pentagon Jr. is so mad he still breaks Vampiro's arm as a sacrifice to his master. And that, that very well could happen. I mean, it, w it wouldn't have been the first time. You know, there is precedent for that where Pentagon Jr. loses, but he kind of regains his retribution in the post-match. Certainly the same could be said here. I just feel like Vampiro is meant to serve as Pentagon's legitimizer, giving him what I think the Lucha Underground, you know, writers and everything, would deem a big win at their biggest event of the season. And... You know, I, I keep saying, like, oh, this guy's going to be a world title contender. That guy's going to be a world title. The beautiful thing about Lucha Underground is they have so many regular world title defenses on their television product yeah. that I don't feel like however many people you put out there, it never becomes hyperbole. So I'll say right now, Pentagon Jr. is another one that I could see gunning for the world title this season, uh, or next season, rather. Yeah. And I feel like the launching pad is beating Vampiro. Pentagon Jr. is one of the best guys on the roster right now. I, I, I love what the guy does. I love how he, like, brands himself with the whole catchphrase, the, the arm bar that he does where he just breaks the arms, the master. Like, 
He is so well-rounded. I think he is primed, primed for a big win here, and I just see it coming at Ultima Lucha. So I'm picking Pentagon Jr., but again, it's not really contentious. You know, I can't argue with your logic here. So if you're sticking with Vampiro, dude, I totally get it because I can see your point wholeheartedly. I think you're looking at this as like a Randy Orton Cactus Jack. I'm looking at this more as like a Mil Mortes Phoenix thing where, you know, the guy that everyone's kind of expecting to win is going to lose only to come back even stronger later on. Right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my thought. Well, we disagree. This is the third match, I think, that we disagree on. How crazy is that? I know, right? I thought this would be more of a unanimous thing, but let's get on to our uh, seventh match, or sixth match, actually. Phoenix, Aerostar, Bengala, Big Rick, Jack Evans, King Cuerno, Sexy Star, seven-way match for the Lucha Underground, Gift of the Gods, and John, who do you think? Now, Ashton, just to clarify for all of our listeners, and more importantly, me, uh, this is a ball to the finish, right? So first pinfall gets it, correct? This is not an elimination style where, like... I believe so, yes. So knowing that it's... I wouldn't have changed my prediction otherwise, but I just wanted to get that framed out. I feel like this is Phoenix's to win. Yeah, I I agree with you there. I think you're totally right, because he's the only one that's really stood out out of the seven. Right. He's the only one who's really had to fight. And obviously all six of the other competitors had to win their uh their medallions in a in a match but phoenix has had to fight twice in absolutely grueling matches in multiple person matches and he's the only person that's actually had to win two matches in order to get that medallion to get his spot in this match and the way that they're building him it definitely feels like they're kind of putting a frame around phoenix to be like see this guy pay attention to this guy because he's about to go far and i think you make an excellent point actually because here's the thing i think if you're watching Lucha Underground, which I'm hoping anybody who watches Premium Predictions, you've been keeping up with it, at least until, like, you know, very early on in the season, if not until the very beginning. Um, you got to look at a person's whole season, I think, and look at their whole trajectory, not just a particular angle in isolation. And Phoenix has had such a roller coaster season because when you think about, you know, Aztec Warfare, you know, he did pretty, uh, well, not poorly in that, but he got a poor number he fought through. I, I think he made it pretty close to winning the whole thing, but then he got eliminated. Uh, the whole thing with Mil Muertes, uh, Grave Consequences, which made my match of the year list. I think the first uh, of only two Lucha Underground matches to make that list. The second, of course, being all night long, Mundo uh, Puma. Um, and it gets powerbombed through a building. I mean, before that, he wins a medallion, gets powerbombed through a building, <laughs> loses the medallion. Medallion wins it back again. They're making Phoenix struggle. They're playing on the whole the Phoenix will always rise again sort of deal. And I'm telling you, I said after Grave Consequences, that man should be number one contender. And that man should be a world ch- You know what? I'm glad they didn't hastily give it to me because him having Gift of the Gods, that's going to be one hell of a story season two to see Phoenix try and keep that championship. And to me, here's the thing, and I think this is coming more as like a fan of Phoenix than anything else, but I honestly would be dissatisfied with any other winner here. I mean, maybe Sexy Star could get away with it, and King Cuerno. Those are the, maybe the only other two, but those yeah, three. I agree. Anybody else, yeah. Those are the ones that stick out to me, too. Yeah, but you know maybe, what? Like you know what? Maybe, all... even, maybe even Big Rick because of the little talk that he and Dario had. Yeah, maybe. You know, I mean, that's why. I mean, I guess you could add him as, like, a fourth, but really, again, out of that crop, I think, you know, pun I guess totally intended, the Phoenix rises, and he's the one that I think deserves it more than anybody right now. Um, I, I want to see him as world champion. So they succeeded in that endeavor because he's this really hot baby face. You should want to see a hot baby face get some gold around their waist. And I'm ready for a Phoenix world title reign. I've been ready for, I think, a few months now. So Phoenix to win the very first gift of the gods, and I'll even go one step further. I think he will keep it, and I think he will cash it in. Successfully or not, I'm not ready to go that far, but I don't think he'll be losing it after he wins it. So that's my prediction. Yeah. I feel like... um. You know that that whole uh, match of the year list that you have? Yeah. You seriously need to go back and rewatch Mundo Cuerno in the Steel Cage match because that thing was freaking amazing. It was so good. I actually did rewatch it a few weeks ago. It is just what a match that was. But it's still not on your list. Still not on my list, no. Wow. All right. Well, we agree that Phoenix is going to be winning the Gift of the Gods. Hopefully uh, hopefully that comes to fruition. Or, you know what, hopefully they swerve us. Hopefully Lucha Underground does what they always do, and they 
kind of swing their right arm expecting a right hook and then they just jab us with their left and we just never see it coming. I mean, I'll put it to you like this before we move on. It's Phoenix is my number one choice. King Cuerno, immediate number two. If King Cuerno were to win it, I'd have no qualms about it. In fact, maybe him and Phoenix could even have a feud over that belt. I think this match in and of itself is kind of a spoiler because I feel like whoever wins this match is going to be very, um, very telling of who's going to win the main event. Yeah. Just, yeah, I, I could definitely see your logic there. Because you if, if Phoenix or Sexy Star or Aerostar or Bengala, um, I like Bengala, but he hasn't really been around long enough for me to believe that he's going to win. If any of those people win it, you would definitely think Mil Mortes would win the title. Whereas if Big Rick, Jack Evans, or King Cuerno would win the Gift of the Gods, you'd think Puma would retain, right? Right. I, yeah, I mean, you'd have to think. Yeah. So I definitely see your point there. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Well, I'm picking Phoenix, which kind of gives away what I'm picking for the main event, but we'll get to that next. Blue Demon Jr. versus Tejano is first, though. And I'm going to come right out and say it. I think this is a simple match with a very simple build, and it's going to have a simple result. The younger guy goes over, Tejano wins. I, I have to think that Tejano win here. Um, you know, like you, I, oh, I think it's John, a very straight... Um, just, just to be clear, because you're kind of breaking up a little bit. you got a little bit of robot voice going on. You said Tejano, right? Yeah, I think Tejano's going to win. Okay. So, yeah, nothing really much to say there. Tejano's going to be another one of the very interesting second season if he keeps his babyface role going. Uh, Blue Demon Jr., I think he's kind of serving that same role that we talked about with Drago earlier, that enhancement talent. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But Tejano, again, and again, just because they do so much regular TV title defenses, Tejano's another one I could see getting a world title shot in season two. So give him the win. You know, and maybe even if Alberto Al Patron wins it, kind of like I'm thinking they may do, maybe, you know, you kind of reignite that feud, but instead of AAA, you do it Lucha Underground style. I don't know. But, yeah, I completely agree with you. Tejano to get the win. See, and on the flip side, I could see Tejano and Mundo locking it up since they haven't met yet in Lucha Underground. Uh, yeah, I mean, they did have that match last week, but I really like that. I would like to see a feud between those two, definitely. Did they have a singles match last week? Yeah, they did, but it got it got thrown out because the crew interfered. Yeah, that's well. Yeah, so it, it didn't even go for like two minutes, though, didn't it? It was really quick. I think it got a little bit of time, but not that much. Really? I don't remember that so, match at all. So, all right. Well, apparently, I'm just losing my mind. Uh, both of us agree, though, Tejano for the win, right? Yeah. All right, here we go, dude. The Lucha Underground Championship match. We've got the champion, Prince Puma, defending against the challenger, Mil Muertes. I'm just going to come right out with it. I think man, we're going to have a new champion. <sighs> yeah. I, I just, I, I can't see how it could go any other way. But you know what, though? And again, I, I have to be that guy um and and just say that i can't really see prince puma going that quietly and remember what i said about the trios tag team match you yeah. know if um if team sitcom were to retain if i were to pick them to retain by my own logic i'd have to pick prince puma to retain and you know what i think how he closed uh lucha underground last week standing tall over the disciples of death and mil muertes uh i think we're going to see the same thing again and Prince Puma, I'm picking him to retain. Mil Muertes is looking unstoppable right now, but I think they want to make Prince Puma beast levels of credible, which I feel like personally they've already achieved, but I feel like they want to take it one step further. I'm telling you, man, I am sensing an Alberto Alpatron prince Puma feud. He even called him out uh, during all night long. He said, when I'm done with Mundo, you know, I'm coming you know, for you next. And I think that's exactly how it's going to go. I say Prince Puma retains, and his first feud in Season 2 is Alberto Alpatron. So my wow. prediction. Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this. As unstoppable as Mill has been, I don't think uh, Katrina, and again, her army of the undead is walking away with a single thing that night. Wow. I have to say, it's, 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 yeah. Holy yeah, man. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, dude. I, like, shocks me too, man. M Mil Muertes has been such an amazing character. The best backstory 
loved him from the jump. And much like Phoenix, I'm ready for a Mil Muertes world title reign when they want to give the belt to that guy. It, it's just not now. I think Puma is the man right now, and they don't want to abandon that yet. I think they see big money and a very credible Prince Puma taking it to Patron. That's just the route I see them going. I don't know what Mil Muertes does for Season 2. Maybe he feuds with Phoenix over the Gift of the Gods belt because maybe he's angry that Phoenix got up after being powerbombed through a freaking building. But, you know, to me, it's just not his time to win the world title, at least John, you've not gotta against remember, You've got to remember, I know that we kind of see him as a, like a, a forever heel, but Alberto Al Patron is the biggest baby face in Lucha Underground right now. And it's true. But he's also very arrogant. He's made no bones about, you know, making that like a part of his character. Oh, like he's, man. You know, he's gotten in Puma's head before. He's had the little cinematic uh, segments with Puma before. He's called him out. He's laid down the gauntlet. I think these two are going to come to blows, and the Lucha Underground Championship is going to hang in the balance. All right, man. Sucks, well, you know? uh, yeah, it does, but because here's my thing. I am standing by the prediction, and we've been saying this, I think, since Mill's resurrection. Mil Muertes is going to be the first person ever to kick out of the 630. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So you think that's going to happen, but you still think Puma's going to retain? I think Puma is a character that overcomes the odds. And what greater odd is there than a man that kicks out of your best shot? I think he's going to find a way to win again. It's not the end of Puma, not by a long shot. Oh, Eventually. my God, yeah. dude. Well, wow, we have such different opinions on this show. That's crazy. All right, well, there you go, folks. I, I can't even believe you're picking Puma and Team Sitcom both to retain. I'm picking the Disciples of Death and Mil Muertes. Just the way that they've been built, it doesn't make any sense in the world to me for them to build them up this much only to have them both lose at the biggest show of the year. And I, I, again, you're going against your own rule. Whoever stands tall on the last show usually loses the pay-per-view match. Puma stood tall on Lucha Underground episode number 37. And now you're saying that he's just, even despite that, he's still going to retain Ultima Lucha. He's the man right now. I, I, I'm telling you, like his fanfare and I think the faith the company has in him. just a little further and if anybody's going to take that title off of Prince Puma I'm thinking Patron's going to be the man to do it and you have no idea how much I hate myself for even saying it see and again I, though I yeah. have to keep coming back to the idea that Alberto El Patron is more of an outsider he is more of a when you see his face the label that you kind of slap on it isn't Lucha Underground it's Triple A it, you know and to me Prince Puma right. and, and Mil Muertes and Johnny Mundo even though Mil Muertes is also in AAA, he's a completely different character there. Alberto El Patron is the same person, same character in AAA and in Lucha Underground. Mil Muertes is unique to Lucha Underground, and then El Macias is unique to AAA. Johnny Mundo and Prince Puma are basically creations of Lucha Underground. So I am absolutely blown away that you're picking Alberto El Patron to feud with Puma, and possibly even, I'm assuming you're probably going to pick him to take the title from Puma eventually. I think he's got as good a chance as anybody. Oh, I, I, I really do. It well, sucks. Yeah, it I'm sucks. telling you, man, I think yeah. I, I have more faith in Lucha Underground than you do, I guess, because I don't think they're going to push Alberto that hard. I think they know that it doesn't matter what they do with him. People are going to buy his merch. He's going to be popular. They're going to make money from him no matter what they do with him because the, the fans just absolutely love him. Yeah, and maybe He's, you're right honestly, about Honestly, I know this is ironic because he had kind of an iconic feud with him in WWE. I feel like Alberto El Patron is the Dolph Ziggler of Lucha Underground. Massively over, but the writers know how over he is, and they know that he's basically bulletproof because of that, because no matter how many times he loses, all it's ever going to do is make the crowd love him even more. And that's kind of exactly. how Dolph is in WWE. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I just feel like, you know, Patron was actually close to the world title once before. You know, he had to, you know, beat Hernandez, but then Mundo cost him that opportunity. So the story I see is Patron takes care of Mundo, and then there are no roadblocks for Patron, you know, after uh, Puma takes care of Mil Muertes. So he's kind of doing Patron's work because he'll have already taken care of Mil Muertes, and then those two can meet in the middle. I just see a collision 
course between these two. It's been teased, and I feel like season two is the time to tap into it. Wow. I, you know, I, you know that a promotion is good and that they're doing cutting edge stuff. I can't remember the last time we had a this divided preview and predictions, not just in match outcome, but in just match philosophy and the future. And the crazy that. thing is, like, I feel like for the first time ever, you're almost the pessimist of the two of us. Like, I'm always the one saying, oh, yeah, that would be so awesome. But, you know, they're going to do that. Right. And now it's like the complete opposite. Like, I'm picking the stuff that I think makes the most sense and the stuff that I think Lucha Underground would be smart to go with. And you're just like, yeah, that would be great, but you know they're not actually going to do that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that Lucha Underground has brought us to this position. This is going to go down for me as one of our most interesting preview predictions of all time because of just the disparities in our opinions. But yeah, I mean, and there I you have it, wait. guys. I cannot wait to do Ultima Lucha preview predictions for Season 2. Oh, absolutely. And I think, if it, yeah. I think that's going to be the note that we leave out on. John picks Prince Puma to retain. I pick No Muertes. I think that's going to be the final note. So, John, if you want to get anything else in here, go for it. Otherwise, I'm going to close out. Absolutely not, Ash. I think Ultima Lucha is going to be a great show. I cannot wait for this, man. This is going to be amazing. Absolutely. This show, two weeks, and it's crazy because, like, for the longest time, we thought it was just going to be a, a two-hour show. And that would have been great because no episode of Lucha Underground has ever been more than one hour. But now, three hours, uh, kind of like the official time for a pay-per-view, I feel like. And I am just so excited for this. It's going to be incredible. I can't even can't yeah, even articulate gonna... how excited I am. It's going to be so good. I'm right there with you, brother. I can't even English knowing how amazing the show is going to be. I can't wait for the debate. To... How many of you, Ashton, how many of you agree with me? Also, make sure, again, keep the comments absolutely spoiler free. You know, we're so excited for the show. We don't want any giveaways. But, yeah, guys, share your opinions. Oh, Says. man, your internet is so bad. You're You're cutting out quite a bit. But anyway, um, yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to leave it at that. I don't know if you guys caught what John said. I don't know if the recording picked it up, but he was basically saying, tell us what you think. Do you agree with me that Mil Muertes and the Disciples of Death are going to dominate their way to the top of Lucha Underground? Or do you think that things are basically going to stay where they are and Prince Puma and Team Sitcom are going to maintain their own dominance and I guess uh, another little side thing is, do you think that Johnny Mundo is finally going to give John a reason to mark the F out on our live reactions? And we will talk to you guys for our Ultima Lucha live reactions. <laughs>